video, we're going to talk about these. I mean, it, it's in the title, Brian. We're talking about Gretsch guitars. We're going to go through different models, different types of guitars. Special guest is going to pop in here in a little bit, which I think is going to bless you. It will us. And uh, what makes them awesome? Yeah. Why you see them so much? Why maybe you should have one in your guitar arsenal? I did it. And... If you are looking for a Gretsch, we might be able to help you figure out which model or which type of Gretsch mm -hmm. is right for you. a brand or type of guitar that is m m associated with modern P&W music, Gretsch is at the very top of that list. So in this first section, we're going to tackle maybe why we think that is. Why is Gretsch so popular, so associated with the modern P&W thing? Is it all just hype? Is it all because a few select players played them on videos? Maybe partly. But I think there is an argument you could make why this platform, this, this, all the different types of Gretches, because they all kind of have a sound, which we're also going to talk about. We're talking about that. Why, why they are so prevalent in this style of music. What you see a lot of, mm -hmm. um, at least back several years ago, for sure, which I think has kind of like established it. Michael Chislett was a big mm -hmm. Falcon Gretch guy. Droff. Nigel Hendroff, mm -hmm. um, Jeffrey Cundy, yeah. like those guys to name a few. More recently, um, I've noticed that there have been more Gretches in the hands of praise and worship players. Brian Carl's a Black Falcon player. Mm -hmm. Brian Carl, I wouldn't say he's a friend, but we're he plays for passion. He plays for, for passion. Yeah. And so, you know, as I got this, we were chatting. And he's like, dude, I love mine. And yeah. So recently, a handful of the Elevation guitar players have yeah. them. They're in more hands now. Yeah. And so I feel like I've always wanted one, but that didn't help my case for wanting one more because I, I hear the sound. Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing guitar for so long. I, you know, this isn't a listen to how great I am because I can distinguish what kind of guitar it is. It's yeah. like I've been playing guitar for so long that there are some sounds are unmistakable. A Gretsch, Gretsch is sound is yes. especially one where somebody hits a lead line. It yeah. gives it a little bit of Bigsby. Like yeah. it's like, so that sound works so well in this it style. Works of music. So well, 
And uh, one of the big reasons why, so certainly the players who have played one, yes, famously, is a big reason why they are an in guitar. And that's and that's kind of the mo- most obvious reason why anything can be popular is because people yeah. you see and emulate and look at yeah. just out of like where do we get the music from? Yeah. Those players play these guitars, and so that's the easy answer. They do play them for a reason. They do. And the albums that we listen to that we sing in churches have these guitars all over them for a reason. There is a clarity even though, like, these guitars have the both exact same pickups. They as far the same, as we can tell, the number on the front. They have the same patent number on them. Yes, which leads us right. to believe. They're both Gretsch's high sensitivity, is that what they call them? High sensitivity filtertrons, right? Uh, these are humbuckers, and we'll talk a little bit more about the pickups versus other types of Gretsch pickups soon, but... Um, these pickups, even though they're humbuckers and they're darker than people think they are and they're higher output than people assume they are, they have a clarity and a chime to them that works really well, especially in a dense mix, which when you come, when you think of praise and worship, you think like, you know, there's five guitar players on stage, there's 47 synths happening, there are pads there are multiple there are legitimately acoustic guitars. Three piano tracks. Yes. Yeah. So the mi- <laughs> the mixes can be really really dense, and these guitars, the way they sound, helps them cut through and stick out in a mix like that really well. You don't only see it from P and W players. Bradford and I were talking about who are some Gretsch players that are famous, and and the two that we came up with are people you might not expect, but I think they or at least them. one. They at least, yeah, and they, but I think they play them for the same reasons. Yes. So number one, that Ed is a lot of you are probably already. A lot of it. you know this because he has a signature Gretsch that's very expensive. Is Malcolm Young from ACDC, yeah. rhythm guitar player. One pickup. He plays alongside Angus, who's taken up a lot of sonic space, and so I think the reason Malcolm plays. The, t- the Filtertron style pickup is because it really lets, it sets those two guitars apart and you can hear them both really well. Yeah. And they're defined and it complements a dense, full sound. So the other Gretsch player that you might not realize is a famously a Gretsch player. Richard Fortas. From of one Guns and Guns Roses. Guns and Roses. I was watching. Also a rhythm guitar player. I was watching Rig Rundown yeah. from Premier Guitar. I've been. I love it so much. It's like super nerdy. It takes yeah. for like some of them are like 30, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. I love They're good. It. They're good. He was talking about the fact that the reason he plays, because he plays Falcons. Mm-hmm. Like, think about Guns N' Roses <laughs> and think about think a Falcon. Feed, feedback might be an issue. Yeah. He plays the big hollow body ones too. He does. Yeah. And he said, he goes, there's something about the sound. He's like, they got the, the low end and they got this, this presence, this chime, and like the mids are scooped out. And he's like, and that's where Slash lives. Yeah. And it's like the perfect way to like encapsulate what he's doing. And I was like, oh my gosh. That is why they sound great. And like, I've, I've just, I just yeah. hadn't really thought about it. Like, I was just like, Gretsch's sound cool, Filtertron sound cool. I yeah. like that sound. But to hear, and then when after he said that, my next I was like, well, wait a minute. Yeah, Malcolm Young. Like, yeah. it makes sense. Mm-hmm. So it's, they sit in a mix really well. It's, yeah. it's interesting because when you hear, when I play this thing or any Gretsch on its own, I'm yeah. like, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. But when you play in a mix, it's one of the few guitars to me that like, just like you can just be like, oh man, it just like fits. Like yes. everything else, like it's guitar. It's not like it's out of place. Yeah. But like playing a they, Gretsch, it's just yeah. like, it's just like puzzle piece. It's just like yeah, it, perfect. I played this guitar last week live with Fuller. And uh, it was the first time I played this live in a long time. I, was, I haven't played live much. Can we hon- uh, horn honk Fuller? Okay. <laughs> Fuller, okay? Uh, <laughs> yes, we can. Just throw that honor upon him. Yeah. Uh, and it was amazing. Like, I could hear it so well. And my inner mix was not any different than what I typically do with everything in it. And uh, it's just, it. you're right, it fits so well. I think that's, that is a huge factor why. I think there are a few more factors. Yeah. Uh, 
just look at the way they look. You talked about that earlier. It's like you're being photographed, you're on video. It's like they look really, yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, and they can be uh, like <laughs> subtle. I point to this as like subtle. Uh, this one might be considered a it's, little more subtle, but it's right? still like a wine. What is it called? Like dark it's cherry sparkly sparkle. burgundy. Um, it, the the wood on the back, man. On but well, this one's painted black, but the wood on the back of those two, gorgeous. Yeah. So like they can be subtle ish or way over the top. Right? The classic Gretsch to me is. Yeah. Well, it, in my mind, is like a the black duo jets. Yeah, yeah. So this, but in black, um, yeah. looks great. I mean, if you want to like stand out, they just reissued. By the way, they did the gold sparkle jet. It's got different. In, it's got block inlays. It's got a little bit different control. It's layout. got a horseshoe on the headstock. It's yep. a little different. This bridge is a little different too. But um, if you like, want the color, yeah, this thing you will stand out. And I think the other piece that really lends itself well. To this style of music is the Bigsby tailpiece. There's something about the way it sounds. It has its quirks. I have a love-hate relationship with it. And when I hate it, I really hate it. When I love it, I really love it. And I want to address that yeah. later on. I want to talk okay. about that. We'll talk about that. But the way the Bigsby sounds is different. And, and the way you can interact with it is different really than any other tremolo system that there is. And it is. And it really lends itself well, especially to the ambient stuff. You can you can get a little movement on it at the end of a lead line or during a you know a really ambient swell type of a thing, and it's just chef's kiss, Bradford. <laughs> earlier that like Gretsch has a lot of different types of guitars but uh, they all kind of have a similar sort of sonic signature to them mm -hmm. a signature sound they call it that great Gretsch sound uh, we're gonna talk about the recipe trademark yes in we're gonna talk about that recipe what gets it so let's talk construction uh, these two guitars look pretty different as far as construction goes but they're actually pretty similar and they represent a lot of the line of Gretsch guitars in that they are semi-hollow. Yeah. So this one is obviously semi-hollow. You can stick your finger in it. Now, some Gretsches have painted on F-holes. Yeah, the, uh, what was it, the Country Gentleman? There's yeah. a Country Gentleman yeah, yeah, yeah. painted. And, like, on the back, there's, like, a leather <laughs> The big piece, round leather piece. Which has got to be to access electronics. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, but that one, too, is... Now, this one and this one both are center block construction. Mm -hmm. So there's a solid center block down the middle. You can see it. And you look then the, uh, the, uh, like the, it's like a thin line construction. So it's hollowed out on sort of the sides. And if you take these plates off, you can see that it's hollowed out up through there. I mean, that's it how they get the them, electronics in them. Yeah, it makes them ring, right? When you play this thing, it rings. That one especially, like when you have F holes, you're going to get more of an acoustic type of a thing out of it. Which is funny because they have like, they kind of sound almost the same. Actually. They got a, they got a, you can hear, they got like this mid-range quality. They do. And you, all of the brushes we've tried, unplugged. all sort of have it. It's kind of, it's, it, we'll talk about this later too. The consistency across the line, across years is pretty, pretty awesome. So we've got a uh, center block, semi-hollow construction, even on the solid body, they call them solid body, solid body jets. This one, this is an 05? Yes, this is an 05. This one is new, 2020. 2020. Uh, same thing, same construction. And I want to say most of the guitars that you would buy, especially from the Pro Line series, but even most of the Electromatic series that you get from Gretsch are semi-hollow even if they say solid body like this, they're semi-hollow still. Makes them really light, really comfortable, makes them really resonant guitars. You yeah. can really feel, they, they feel like they're really vibrating a lot when you play them. 
So the next is the pickups then. You know it, you love it, you, you know what they look like. So they are humbuckers, but mm -hmm. they're, they are a thing. Yeah. Um, honestly, I feel like for me to get the sound that I hear in my head mm -hmm. out, of a, out of a Tron style and in a Gretsch, I want it to be way brighter than normal. So miss, one of the, we're going to talk misconceptions. One of the yeah. misconceptions is that Gretsch filter Trons are really bright, really jangly and chimey, and low output. And that's not really true. They're warm, they're not low, they're not high output, but they're not low output. They're sort of standard humbucker type output in our experience. Um, and they, but, but if you turn the treble and the presence and stuff, if you, if you turn up the treble on your amp, like once you get them going, they've got the thing. They do have the chime and the jangle. Yeah. You just have to get it out of them. So you've got the Filtertrons, which are on this scratch. The other uh, really sort of long standing type of pickup that Gretsch used are these Dynasonic. These are single coils. So those are humbuckers. These are single coils. To me, and you're gonna hear, we're gonna compare these two pickups in this video. We get a lot of questions. Which do you prefer? Yeah. Uh, the filters or the Dynasonics? There are some misconceptions that these are like really, really different. Yeah. To but us, they sound pretty similar. Like they, this sounds, and I know this sounds in, like. In a general sense, they sound pretty similar. Yeah, like I know that you're gonna say like, yes, of course. This sounds like a single coil version of that. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is the tonal characteristics seem to be pretty similar as far as like the mid-range response and tone, the the way it's the, like the lows and the highs are kind of accentuated. This has more of a, an attack to it, a sharper attack. Mm -hmm. There's a more pronounced transient, if you transient, if you will, which is like that hit from the beginning of the note, which is what you would get from a single coil versus a humbucker. Yeah. So they have a little bit of a different attack. They are a little brighter. They are a little bit less output like you would expect from a single coil versus a humbucker, but they really kind of have the same sound. I would say if you were like overall describing the characteristics yeah. of the two pickups, you would almost describe them identically. Yeah, and I gotta say, I kind of like the sound that I have in my head when it comes to Gretsch is probably more easily achieved by this guitar than by with, with my Sparkle Jet with these Dynasonic It pickups. surprised they're us great. both. They're really, really good. Yes. Um, they're like a P90 both of, yeah, version almost. They are. But both of these pickup styles are a huge part of that recipe, that Gretsch sound recipe. A few more things that you get with most every Gretsch. It's a Fender scale length, 25 and a half inch scale length. And the Bigsby tailpiece is a big is a big part of the sound too. Not just the way it feels and plays, but like the tonal characteristics. It does of something the Bigsby. because yeah. the strings are attached to it. Now the hollow body Gretsch stuff is can be a little different. I used to have a hollow body uh, electromatic. It and this, was big. It was like an acoustic. This is worth pointing out. This is a player's edition. You got the center block. This yeah. is this is a thin line. Right. This one is, I mean, it's got to be just it's as probably thick about the as same as this. One of those. Right. So hold it up. Yeah, it's about the same. Spot on. Yeah. This is how I would what I would call this is like a Gretsched out three thirty five. Right. Which is kind of why. But it doesn't sound like a three thirty five no, it at all. It's got it can get some semi reminiscent mm -hmm. tones, but there are Gretches that are like acoustics with pickups. Right. And, and there are also Gretches like Gretch acoustics. The, the, <laughs> yeah, there are that are different looking than normal. Yeah, they look like they look like a Gretsch <laughs> acoustic. Yeah, and the like the Falcon. Sort of what you might really think of as a, the White Falcon is that big hollow body yeah. Falcon. Well, I've played one of those a couple times before. It is a beast. Like, it's awesome, but it, that thing is huge. I prefer, like, these little smaller little bodied guitars like that one or this one. So certainly different models from Gretsch and the different types of guitars they offer are going to vary in the way they sound. But the fact that they all use similar elements in this recipe of, of construction... Um, from like literally like the 50s on, they all sort of have this similar vibe, the similar atonal characteristics that they would describe as, again, the great Gretsch sound that fits so well in the style of music that we do. <laughs> Thank you.
two years or so, we've gotten to know and become friends with Chris Rocha. He is a incredible guitarist. Oh, known, he's so good. Known very well in the Hispanic community, uh, Hispanic church community. He plays for a lot of different Hispanic artists and a lot of Mil San Marcos groups. is what he's probably really well known for. That's right. A lot. Mm-hmm. Of, so we just he is a huge fan of the Gretsch. Like, and he's a Gretsch artist. Too. He's a Gretsch artist. If you see, if you follow him on Instagram, seen his videos, his like. Wall of Gretches is <laughs> about equivalent to like Brian and I's whole collection. Period. Yes. Um, he he is a huge fan of the sound, so we thought it would be very appropriate and fitting. Yeah. To hear from him and just to hear him say what it is that he wants out of those guitars and why he wants it and why he uses those all the time. He's going to show you a little bit about that. So we're going to kick it over to him. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Rocha, and I want to give a huge shout out to my boys. Brian and Bradford, thanks for inviting me to be a part of this video. I love everything you guys do. You guys are crushing it these days. I follow you guys on Instagram, on YouTube, everywhere. You guys are doing a great job. Uh, and thanks for the invite on this collab. All right, so Gretsch guitars. We're going to talk about Gretsch guitars. I have currently a total of eight Gretsch guitars, all different types of models. I love them all. Honestly, I'm a huge fan. I think if, uh, if you guys follow me on the socials, you know I'm a huge fan of Gretsch. So let's get down to these two. These are some of the prettiest ones that I have. I'm a huge fan of the white and gold combination. These are called Broadcaster guitars. This is the Broadcaster. This one is the Broadcaster Junior. And I think out of the eight that I have, these are the two that I use the most. They have, the, their tones are pretty, they, they're pretty, they're spread out pretty wide. You can do like the classic chimey Gretsch tone. Uh, or like me, I really like to dig into these guitars and get, because they bite pretty good. They got a nice grit to them. So I'm just going to demonstrate some of that for you guys. Um, let's start with this broadcaster. White, gold hardware, just a beautiful combination uh, of colors. And these pickups are the Fultron pickups that they come with, out of the factory, Fultrons. Um, Huge tones, aggressive fat tones. Uh, let's go with just a, let's uh, take a listen to this with just a basic overdrive. I just got an overdrive on this and let's take a, let's take a listen at how it sounds. <laughs> That was my treble pickup. I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna put in the middle and use both pickups. A little bit thicker tone. Let's go to my rhythm. Let's add a little delay to that because I love using delays. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, add some verb, and we're going to do like a we're going to do like a classic ambient tone. Cheryl pickup do kind of a similar thing uh, and within the mix I really like to use my Cheryl pickup whenever I want a particular part to cut through the mix and be heard through all the different stuff that's going on
Those are just epic tones. I love those tones. So now I'm going to pick it up a little bit. Let's say we're in a song and the song gets pretty huge and the band gets pretty big. And you're like, dude, I really want my guitar to match the dynamics of a band. So I'm going to go with very, very light verb. I'm going to keep the delay on there and let's add an overdrive on top of my overdrive. <laughs> Sounds nice and fat. I'm gonna go with my middle pickup and do some more like lead tones. which it reacts really well in those particular situations. Now let's say like it's like a massive part of the song and they look to you and they're like, okay, I need an epic solo out of the guitar. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put, I've got this new pedal called the Asabi that I'm really digging. The Asabi on top of the, the Valiente, which is my overdrive, and I'm gonna kick that in. It's a lot of gain going on, but that's the cool thing about these guitars. Since the this broadcaster has a center block, you can really gain it up. And in my particular situation, my personal situation, a lot of the tones that I like to get are very high gain tones. I'm not the typical Gretsch guy that does a lot of just a chimey stuff, super vibe stuff. I do like that stuff, but I'm known a lot for like my just huge lead tones. And when it comes to that, these Gretsches, this broadcaster, the broadcaster junior, give me exactly what I want. All right, so we're good. Let's go ahead and give the guitar a rest. Uh, let's go ahead and go with the Broadcaster Junior. All right, so now we've got the Gretsch Broadcaster Junior. Uh, this blue uh, color, the paint job is so nice. I remember the first time I saw this guitar, I was at NAMM and they had it like on display. And this actually is the one they had on display at NAMM. Mike, uh, when I contacted Mike and when he sent me this guitar, he goes, I'm gonna wait for the stuff to come back from NAMM and I'll send you what we get from that. And I got this guitar last year. It was actually, I think it was, I remember the date, March 18th, because we were about to fly out March 19th uh, on our tour last year, and then the pandemic hit, and the whole year got canceled. We all know about that, the pandemic, everything that I did. But this guitar was supposed to be for my touring last year, and um, I fell in love with it. As soon as I saw it, it came in, in the box, you know, opened it up. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing's so gorgeous. And the cool thing, it's kind of interesting, every guitar, even though even though these two have the same pickups, it does sound very, very different. Uh, maybe it's the way it's wired, I'm not sure, but uh, I think um, just because the guitar has the same pickups, it's, if it's got different wood, you know, all that stuff, maybe it's built differently, it, does, it is gonna sound different. And this one does sound different. I, I tend to get a little bit more gain out of this guitar, um, and I think it sounds a little beefier. Um, I feel like my broadcaster has a little bit more of a mid-tone hit. This one is a little bit beefier sounding. So let's take a listen to this guitar. I'm going to take off my effects and I'm just going to run a drive. I actually had to back off my drive a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to run overdrive off of this guitar. <laughs> What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gain it up a little more. I'm gonna put my Eternity Drive on top of my Valiente Drive, and then let's see how that sounds. <laughs> So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some, let's, let's think of different dynamic situations we'll be in. I'll add a little verb, I'll add some delay, 
and uh, let's see how it goes with the ambient tones. Yeah, that had super nice, super, super nice. All right, so those are the ambient tones. Now let's get into more of the lead tones, which is uh, the funnest part for me, them lead tones. I'm gonna throw uh, a couple uh, overdrive, a distortion pedal and a little delay. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty, pretty cool right there. Um, so, uh, let me see what else we got. That's basically about it. I'm just gonna, I'm kind of feeling a little blues going on. Right, let's put a little blues and let's see how it goes to that. <laughs> because we got a blue guitar. I've had I kind of felt like playing a little blues there for you guys. Yeah, that's basically these these two guitars. We got the Gretsch Broadcaster, the Gretsch Broadcaster Junior. If you guys are looking to get something that can really like, you know, go from like your ambient, classic ambient worship tones to just like some drive, some grit, some lead tones that you can get the really epic sound <clears throat> out of, these are your two choices. What's really cool about this Junior too is it's got this dip in here. So if you want to go high, I like to go high live, you know? You, you kind of get excited and you want to go higher and higher and higher. This one gives you a little bit of option when it comes to that. The This one it has a cut off a little at this point right here. You can't go super high, but uh, it's still the guitar. I think I use this one the most out of it, all the guitars that I have. So Brian and Bradford, thank you guys for having me, uh, having me be a part of this video. You guys are amazing. God bless. <laughs>
market for a Gretsch and you go to the website, which they have a great website, by the way. If you it's haven't been to their great. site, they, I think they've recently redone it and it looks really good. Um, and it's really easy to see like all their lineup. We're going to talk a little bit about what you get. Like, what is the player's edition? Because we have two of them represented uh, here. Yeah. Plus a non-player's edition. More of a vintage sort of inspired guitar. Uh, originally, we were going to do this, like, the difference between the Jet, specifically this Jet, and your Falcon. Uh, but I think we can kind of hit them all, because they all sort of fall in different categories. So the first kind of guitar from Gretsch that you'll see is, like, the big hollow body. And I had the Electromatic hollow body years ago. I mean, we're talking, like... It's like an acoustic almost. Yeah, um, and I was not, I liked the way it sounded and everything, but I did not, when I played electric guitar, I didn't want to feel like I was playing a big acoustic. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a little too much bulk for me. Um, and so if you are an, an acoustic player and love it and you want to play electric and you want the feeling of more of like an acoustic when you play, that is going to be the ticket for you. And you can get pretty much any of these styles of Gretsch from everything from the, the, is it the Streamliner? I'll subtitle myself if I'm, if I said it wrong. The, there's a series like it's the, the, the more budget friendly. Then there's the Electromatic series, which has a wide range of, of options available to you. Those are all, uh, made overseas. Um, well, they're all kind of made overseas. There is some like on USA style, like in, where you're from, but like made in the. Uh, I was almost gonna say Far East, but like these are made in Japan, which this you could Japan. say is Far East too. So made in like Indonesia or China, um, and then there is, and then you jump into like the Pro Line. They call it the Pro Line. That would be made in Japan, which is what all three of the guitars in this video. I'm going to presume that the guitar that Chris played was a Pro Line as well. Um, those are all made in Japan. That would be sort of their high end. They get really expensive. And then you can, there are some custom shop you options. Custom I think shop. you can do, and they have some stuff that's made in the U.S. Because Gretsch is owned by Fender. But their Pro line is still made in Japan. And we'll talk about consistency here in a bit because it's pretty impressive. But you've got like the big hollow body style. And then there are quite a few that I would describe as like this one. Which is like the center block thin line construction. Mm -hmm. And they can come in like different thicknesses yeah. as well. Um, but this would be like the Broadcaster would be in that range. I think it may, the, the Falcon. Broadcaster may be a little thicker. Right. I don't know. You can go to the site and get all the specs. Yeah. But, but they all have kind of the same. I've played a handful of all of these types, you know, just in guitar centers and whatnot. And they all kind of have the same feel to me. And how would you describe playing this? Because it's bigger than yeah. this guitar, but it's not like unwieldy big like the hollow body is no it's i mean i've always i've yet to find the 335 for me but it feels you've always wanted one it feels reminiscent i think it's a little it's not yeah. quite as arced maybe yeah. like an arc top i don't know um but it feels fine yeah uh playing I've, like this area it fits this area. me really well yeah, yeah i mean like it, Haha, ha, funny, funny joke. Like, Bradford it looks is, like a normal guitar Bradford's on Bradford. Bradford's enormous. Yes, we get it's it. Funny, it's funny. It, it looks like a normal guitar on Bradford. Uh, it looks like my three. Hey, you want to switch? Because I'm a normal sized person. Yeah, it's just so they can see. All right. There. We switched. Yeah. Now, this is significantly bigger. Like, the horn or the, you know, this part of the guitar is way higher, but it still feels comfortable. Yeah. I mean, I'd say a lot. Every of time I play this guitar, I'm kind of like wowed by it. It's, it's awesome. It's, it's just. It feels so good. But what's Play, funny about it, though, so is good. this part of the guitar and that part of the same guitar... Uh, I'm sorry, the same part of that guitar feel very, very similar. Like the neck, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the neck, the frets, the fret job, it's very well done. I mm -hmm. mean, I'd say most people who are playing these are probably standing up anyway. So, like, yeah, I enjoy playing that thing this live. This feels fine seated, though. Yeah, it does. It's got the cut. You wouldn't hunch it. over it, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've got, yeah, you've got this uh, sort of larger bodied thin line center block type of a guitar and then you have the jet platform which they would call solid body but in most cases is chambered sort of a thin line type I mean of let's be real as well it's it's a single, single cut. cut it's their single cut so they have for this you know the same way that like the the falcon is like the the blinged up uh broadcaster 
or whatever type of, you know, whatever, whichever version of the Falcon it is, they have a sort of a dressed up Gretsch, and they call that the Penguin. Yes. So uh, it's just got like, Those this cool. has like the gold flake binding, and I mean, this has just got every single appointment. But I would say that the feel and the sound of it isn't that much different than like the more understated version of this guitar. So let's quickly talk about player's edition versus non-player's edition. And to do that, we have a player's edition jet versus an older, like I said, this is an 05 non-player's edition jet. So ignore the fact that there are two switches up here. By the way, this is what they commonly refer to as the mud switch. This is a, uh, a tone switch. This is like the tone rolled halfway off. This is like all the way off, or it might be the other way around. I don't know, because I make a point not to use it much. Yeah. In the middle um, is full on. And then you've got volume, volume for each pickup, and then overall volume up here. This really doesn't have much to do with the fact that it's player's edition. Really what you get with player's edition, let's start from the top. Look at the tuners. So the tuners on this jet, the player's edition jet, mm. are the locking tuners that you screw in the back. Praise God. These have the open gear tuners, so you don't lock these tuners. Uh, that makes them a lot easier to change strings and that kind of thing. Uh, I don't think it necessarily affects string slippage because if you change your, if you you know if you change them correctly, you don't the strings don't slip up here. It's more of a convenience thing. If you look at the bridge, you have a fixed bridge here with yeah, adjustable saddles individually, yeah. and it's not even like pinned. Like, Brian has pinned his. Well, I didn't. The previous owner did. Brian's is pinned. Yes. And, but you can see it's just a block of wood. So this is Gretsch's floating bridge. So if somebody hadn't modified this after they bought it and pinned it, by pin we mean they actually, like, attached it to the body of the guitar. Like, if you take the strings off, this would just fall off. It's a floating bridge. And a lot of Gretsch's have the floating bridge. That's sort of the old school vintage thing. The player's edition stuff is going to have a fixed bridge. Like you can see it. The bridge itself doesn't move. The, guitar. the individual pole pieces move. This saddle right here is completely different than the saddles on yours. Uh, you can't adjust these. this saddle. Whoever did the, the work on this bridge did it right because the intonation is pretty much spot on. Um, the other thing that you'll see like the Bigsby, I'll show you a close-up shot of it. This is a string through Bigsby. So the strings feed through the Bigsby and they don't like attach to those posts. This has the posts that the strings attach to. Like, you know the little ball ends on your strings? Makes them hard to restring. You gotta get yes. that. It's That's a reason a lot of people, yeah. we're gonna wrap up with some of the, the negative things or like the yeah, misnomers yeah. about them. But this so much easier. You just stick it through here, pull it, and it just, yeah. it's, especially with the locking tuner, so yeah. much easier. So basically what it boils down to is the player's edition uh, guitars have like more modern appointments that make them sort of more user friendly for players. Mm -hmm. The non players editions are going to be more true to sort of the vintage spec, but it's going to depend across the range on the model as well. I don't think that they necessarily play any differently if you set them up right. They don't feel that much different. In some cases, like if they have a different fretboard radius, they will. But um, for the most part, it's just small appointments that make the guitar a lot easier to like interact with, changing strings, you know, setting intonation, that kind of thing. It's a lot easier to do on the player's edition. <laughs> Like I said earlier, we get lots of questions specifically, how do the Dynasonics sound compared to the Filtertrons or those Filtertrons in the 
the Falcon that you can't see on the, on the screen. So we're going to show you, we're going to play the same thing through the same sounds back to back to back to show you on all three how they sort of sound different on all three guitars. But like, like we said earlier, as we described the Dynasonics, they just sound like a punchier, uh, you know, different sounding version of the same thing. Different yeah. sounding version of the same, does that make sense? It's better if you just listen to Slightly it. different version. There you go. Same goal. There you go. Different approach. <laughs> All right, so we have a few closing thoughts as we wrap this video up. One of them, we had this whole section planned called Misconceptions, but we've kind of addressed we've covered a lot of them. of them along the way. But one of the big things that people assume about Gretsch's is that because of the Bigsby and the floating bridge is that they don't stay in tune very well. But we found that to be not the case if, if, you, but. If you have it set up well. And you take care of and it. And you take care of it. And yes. you continue to maintain it well. Yes. So the whole point of the setup is make sure the neck relief is right. That will make a big difference. We have a course on that. We do. It's free. I'll link to it below. So make sure the neck relief is right. Make sure that the, uh, the string height and the intonation is set correctly. But really, you need, uh, with any tremolo system, anywhere that the string moves, whether that's here or here or here, you want it to be lubricated, and you can do that in various ways. But if you maintain your instrument and make sure that all of that is taken care of, and you don't leave your strings on for five months at a time. Yeah, well, <laughs> not playing live as much has caused some issues. I know, it does. So but I, if, you keep, if, you, if you change your strings when they need it, yeah. you'll, because strings go out of tune when they get old. One of the things that strikes me about these guitars is just how consistent they are. Yeah. So we have this one which is now uh, 15 years old, is that right? Yeah. 05 to 20, 21, 15, 16 years old. And then we have this one, which is two years old maybe? I bought it March 2020. There's a okay. chance so maybe, maybe it was, it was built made in 2019. 2019. Maybe. So one to two years old. And then you got this one that's pretty much brand new, straight off the, out we of got the factory. It, what, like summer, fall 2020? <clears throat> and it is remarkable how similar these three guitars feel feel yes and and like how they even that they sound but like when they're unplugged they almost have the same sort of ring to them mm -hmm. and the same notes almost when you play them so uh i would say like there are a few brands of guitars that i say this prs being one like the consistency is so high across the line it's like you can pretty much buy one from reverb or sweetwater sweetwater especially since they have such great customer service um, and expect it to play awesome when you get it. Yeah. And all of these are great. Like, uh, the fretwork, the construction, 
the way that they, I mean, I'm just like, they feel like they, these might as well have been made three in a row out of the factory to me. They feel that consistent. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And so that is a remarkable thing, I think, from a guitar builder. Um, finally, we want to talk about to budget. So we have been featuring some pretty expensive guitars in this list. We understand that. I have owned two Electromatic Gretches over the years. So I owned a big orange one. I'll put a picture of it up if I can find one. Uh, I can't remember the model number, but it's like a big hollow body uh, Gretsch. I have also owned an Electromatic uh, Jet hardtail, right? That did not have a big speed. It had their black, trop, black top uh, humbuckers. They're sort of a Filtertron voiced humbucker. Um, that guitar, both of those guitars were really good. They so, still brought the sound. Yeah, they did. And they were, the orange one was quite a bit older since I owned it so, you know, quite a bit longer ago. But the Jet, well, I was, we were both shocked with like how, how solid it was. Didn't you get Especially that for one? the money. I think I paid $230. Like on Craigslist? Yeah, I yeah, found it on Craigslist. Because I really wanted to see like how good are yeah. these, are the current Electromatics. It was a really good guitar, really solid. I played it on a Sunday one time and, and loved it. And those black top uh, pickups, they're pretty highly regarded, um, especially in a more budget-friendly line, and they do sound really good. And, of course, you can swap them out. Like, you can put TV Jones or you can buy... Yeah. Actually, you can find these Gretsch Filtertrons, which are great sounding pickups, for pretty affordable prices. Yeah, and if you're just... Because a lot like, of people will put TV Jones in. Yeah, they'll upgrade from those to, like, TV Jones. Yeah. But, like, if you're just, like... Like, maybe you're, you just occasionally, you're like, I just need Gretsch, a Gretsch yeah. sound. Like, you don't you don't have to spend a lot to get it. Yeah. Uh, or if you're just looking for a guitar in general, and, like, you just... I think they're a solid option Yeah. when you're looking at spending a couple few hundred bucks. I mean, buying straight from Gretsch or a shop... Yeah. It's going to benefit them more, obviously. Um, but if you buy them the used, used market, yeah. used market you can, this was a used buy. That was, which, this is funny. That's that belonged one. to one of the guitarists from Eagles of Death Metal. That's right. has a little <laughs> bit of a pedigree. <laughs> which Brian didn't even know who they were, but he told me about that, and I was like, I don't listen no to way. worldly music. Whoa, no way. <laughs> which is hilarious to me that to see that, like, yeah. like opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Praise and worship, like I said, that's like to hit one note to I've go over four I've redeemed measures. this guitar back to the For Lord. Jesus. That's right. I would say, too, so you made the point, like, if you want to go a more budget-friendly route, the options are solid. Clearly, this is the option. I would say, too, though, if you are, like, dream guitar, and you pick up something like this, which is kind of dream guitar money, right? I would say it does not disappoint. No. In the slightest, at all. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool to say, um, and a lot of the modern guitar builders, they're doing stuff like that, like... It, these days, your guitars have to be great or nobody will buy them. Like, from the budget line all the way through the high-end stuff. But Gretsch is no different. Uh, if you go with the budget Streamliner, Steamliner, we'll put it in. If Whatever Streamliner is the... Streamliner is definitely the word. The is name. it Streamliner? It's definitely Streamliner. Okay. It's not Steam. But I stream. don't know. I don't remember where it fits into the sense. course of their lineup. I think it's I think it's below Electro. Okay, yeah. We'll see if I'm right or not later. <laughs> in post. Clearly, we did our research for uh, this video. Here we go. I'll have two things I can put in. Brian was right. Or Brian was wrong. Brian was right. <laughs> wow. Him or her has really gotten themselves into quite a predicament. Yeah. <laughs> so you can go anywhere from the budget line all the way up to the super high end. And you can go higher than this. You can go custom shop. Custom shop, baby. If you want to. And they bring the goods. And you do get that great Gretsch sound. You with do. All of it. You do. And it is good. And it there's a reason good. why. You see it all over the map in the modern praise and worship stuff. Yeah. And elsewhere, like yeah. Guns N' Roses and ACDC. And ACDC. There you go. Before we wrap up, we want to thank Mike Taft. Yes. Mike Ta Brian and I bought our Gretches. Yes. So this before one, we had met... These two. Before we had met Mike, um, Mike sent this out for us to check out mm -hmm. um, just because it was a newer model. And I must say... I love that thing. I've, it's awesome. I've used it live two, three, four times. Mm -hmm. And I really like it. It's very good. So we, uh, yes, we bought our Gretches, and this was sent to us to, to do some videos and some demos with yep. and to tell you wonderful people about, which actually made this video a little more informative because yeah. we were able to talk about two... And demonstrate. The two of, ones, like, yeah. the, the, like, the pickups that you expect from a Gretsch. Yep. So we hope that that helped a lot. Mike, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. 
And thank you for watching. And thank you. And if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, Bradford and I don't understand what it is you're waiting for. Please. I mean, this is Please. the moment. Take your mouse or glory. your finger, click the little button, it will, you, you know, hit the little bell icon. Yes, your moment of glory. Thank you. Uh, and now's the time. Come on, do it. It's now. as of the taping of this video. Five, four. It is three. May 19th. You will, you will subscribe to this channel. 2021. <laughs> and we are not even at 800,000 subscribers. Not even 800,000. Not even. Not even. <laughs> we need to be. With your help, we we'll get to a million. A million. That was what I was about to say. So help us, please. Maybe you found this. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is the longest outro we've ever found. Longest found. outro. For Maybe another ad will pop up we'll in the meantime. <laughs> and people will think we did it. Thus ends the Gretsch video. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>